thousand nickel, guys. All right. So I feel like there's four steps to anal play. Yeah. The first step is, no, no, don't touch me there. That's my no-no square, and you violently move it away, right? And then if you get a persistent cochino, which I like, right? Persistent and consistent, you know, you kind of start letting them look at it, you know. Maybe they do one of those things, you know, play with it a little bit. That's step two. Step three is you finally let them insert it, whether it's the finger, the tongue, you know, that kind of thing. And then I feel like the fourth step's gonna be me spreading my butt cheeks open and letting a motorboat my fucking bear. <laughs> I'm currently on step two. Keep coming to the shows and see how it progresses, guys. <laughs> see where it goes. <laughs> on that note, okay, let's bring up your next comment, Daniel M. <laughs> Oh, Tess, she said on that note, because she knows I talk about anal sex a lot. Yeah. Oh man, that was speaking of which, it's great to be here, out of the house, away from my uh, parents. <clears throat> man, now, I'm 29 years old and I still live at home with mom and dad, so I don't know if any ladies want to give me a fake number later. <laughs> That'd be great, man. I mean, a little false hope lifts you out of the depression, and you just gotta keep building up from there, man. But no, my parents are way too controlling. I got in trouble for posting a joke on Facebook about anal sex. It just said, anal sex. The one time a guy will try to convince you his dick isn't that big. <laughs> That's true, right? Because they watch too many porn videos with these monstrous freaking nature cocks. They feel all inadequate, but then they put that in there, and she goes, ow! <laughs> right? I think, I think someone was talking about that earlier, right? <laughs> and uh, he's like, hey, you're right, ow. <laughs> but then he tries to warm things up with the pinky, like Tess was talking about, and uh, she goes, ow, again. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Wait, I think my dick is supposed to be bigger than my pinky, so... <laughs> Maybe not, I'm not as big as I thought, but no, nah, my parents actually uh, did get pissed off. My mom calls me up out of the blue, Daniel M. If you want to keep posting jokes like that, you can just not be a Daniel M anymore. I'm like, well, you're going to disown me over a joke, mom? That is some conservative cancel culture. She's like one of those moms who used to write letters to Fox and he was, Family Guy made a sexually inappropriate joke. We're going to boycott their advertisers. <laughs> so she calls me up out of the blue, Daniel M. That is a dirty, dirty hole. And I'm like, dirty hole? Mom, I'm pretty sure you got a fecal transplant once, so you're one to talk. <laughs> Uh, so you can have the dirty stuff from the dirty hole go into your dirty hole, but you can't have other things go into your dirty hole. I see how it is. No true shit, she called me up and she said, Daniel M, that is a dirty hole, and I have never done that. I'm like, Mom, stop calling it a dirty hole. It's just a tighter hole from a guy's perspective. <laughs> That's our pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There's a little leprechaun there going, Follow me to the tighter hole, laddie! Ah, uh, man, they say the grass is always greener on the other side of the hill. I say the hole is always tighter on the other side of the taint, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Actually, I think that's how black holes were discovered, man. It was just a bunch of astronomy nerds looking for the biggest thing in the universe. Going into the smallest hole in the universe at the fastest possible rate. That's what happened. Actually, one of my roommates said that they're trying to recreate black holes in a lab. I'm like, bro, that is so sketchy. Do not try to put your dick in that, man. <laughs> I mean, that's some pussy tight enough to bend space and time, but it's just... I mean, I guess you gotta risk it for the biscuit sometimes, you know what I'm saying? That special biscuit. But she, she actually did call me up. She said, Daniel M, that is a dirty, dirty hole. And I have never done that. I'm like, the fuck, mom? Why are you telling me you've never done anal sex? You're making me picture something really disturbing here. 
my dad not having anal sex for 30 years. That's pretty disturbing if you ask me. <laughs> I'd say a 30 year long marriage with no anal sex is deeply disturbing. I mean, you and dad are my role models. <laughs> like, well, what's gonna make me want to get married? You know? <laughs> Because, like, my dad's a good father and a good husband, you know, my mom would come home from work, they'd come home from work every day, my mom would complain about something Karen said, something Becky said, and it's not just what she said, it's how she said it, and my dad would, you know, listen, give advice, try to help her fix the problem. She said, I don't want you to give advice, I don't want you to fix this, I just want you to listen and understand and empathize. Like, you know how backwards that is from the male perspective? That's like going to the mechanic with broken air conditioning and saying, I don't want you to fix my broken air conditioning. I just want you to listen and empathize and understand that it's hot. I've been doing that to my dad every day and after 30 years, no anal sex. Come on, ma. Stop being a prude and take my dad's cock in your ass already. <laughs> Now, a little about my parents. My dad's a Mexican, my mom's Polish. They met in Arizona. That's kind of a pretty heavily Mexican populated area. But I grew up looking at my Mexican side through a half white lens, right? So I noticed my white family, they brag about how much they pay for something, bro. Look at that watch. That's a nice watch, right? $300 watch. My abuelita, go over to her house, you like that solar? Mm. I got that at Dollar General for only 39 cents. <laughs> you like those chips, me? Oh, those are good, huh? I got those at Dollar General for only 79 cents. <laughs> you have a comfy on that couch, me? Oh, you like that couch? I got that at Dollar General. Out back, behind the dumpster. <laughs> I got good stuff there, me? Oh, you throw that away. Ah, uh, my childhood. Now, I, I grew up maybe autistic, man. I say maybe autistic because uh, they did the test and the test wasn't very conclusive. They showed me these pictures of people's faces. They're like, what is that person feeling? I'm like, but these people are bad actors. And my <laughs> kid, uh, <laughs> this one, they're like, what is this lady feeling? She's like, I'm like well, she looks kind of angry, but she also looked like she's taking a dump. <laughs> That's the other thing, as a kid, like, I took things too literally. I'm like, what's up with this phrase, take a dump? Like, does anyone take a dump when they go in the bathroom? I mean, could you imagine? Like, you go into the bathroom and you take a dump, like, home with you? <laughs> you do that, you can't be friends anymore. Anyways, I got the light. I'm Daniel Adams. Come talk to me.